Unlike most movie genres, horror is not defined by heroes, but by villains. Michael Myers is the face of the Halloween franchise, not Laurie Strode. Hannibal Lecter leaves such a huge impression in Silence of the Lambs, it's easy to forget how infrequently he actually appears. Despite the fact that fiendish figures like these have had a massive impact on pop culture, the horror genre has created surprisingly few popular antagonists. Sure, we all know Jason Voorhees, Chucky and Freddy Krueger, but only a handful of horror villains have become household names. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 awesome horror movie villains you've never heard of. Number 10. Frank Zito, Maniac Due to Elijah Wood's doe-eyed, innocent face, it's interesting to see the Lord of the Rings star play a more unhinged character, as he did in Sin City and The Last Witch Hunter. However, his work on the 2012 remake of Maniac might be his best as well as his scariest. This underappreciated slasher centers on a schizophrenic called Frank Zito, who is in charge of a mannequin shop. Due to his traumatic childhood, Frank is compelled to kill women so he can add their hair and scalps to his mannequins. Rather than depicting Frank like a generic movie psycho, the majority of the film is shown through his viewpoint. Although our lead is rarely seen, this technique lets viewers get a proper glimpse of Frank's chilling and depraved reality. Even though it sounds like an odd choice to ADR most of Wood's lines, it works in the film's favour since it makes Frank sound unnatural and disconnected. Although Frank is unsettling, he's at his scariest when he's calm, since viewers know a lethal outburst can be unleashed in an instant. Number 9. Richard Vickers, Creep Show. George A. Romero's Creep Show deals with extraterrestrial plants, killer cockroaches, and a cake obsessed zombie. And yet, Leslie Nielsen's more grounded baddie, Richard Vickers, steals the show. When he learns that his wife Becky is sleeping with Harry Wentworth, Vickers leads him to a beach and pulls a gun on him. Rather than killing him then and there, Vickers urges Harry to bury himself up to his neck in sand while the tide is coming in. He then turns on a nearby television, showing that Becky is also buried neck deep in sand. After recording Harry, Vickers heads home and gleefully watches him and Becky drowning to death on his TV while sipping a cocktail. Creepshow has plenty of entertaining villains, but Vickers stands out due to his jocular demeanor. He's holding all the cards, so has no need to raise his voice or display anger, which makes it scarier when he calmly sentences his wife and her lover to a slow and painful death. It's also worth mentioning that Nielsen is effortlessly sinister in the role, despite his reputation as a comedic actor. Vickers is so far removed from Nielsen's wheelhouse that his biggest fans may be oblivious of his stellar performance in Creepshow. Number 8. Rusty Nail, Joyride In Joyride, also known as Roadkill in the UK, Fuller Lewis and Venner are on a road trip when their radio picks up the signal of a trucker called Rusty Nail. The three friends prank Rusty, setting him up on a date with a sexy and non-existent woman called Candy Cane at a nearby motel. Humiliated by the gag, Rusty takes a page out of Steven Spielberg's duel and chases the trio's car in his monstrous juggernaut. Although Rusty's voice is regularly heard, his face is never seen, nor is his backstory explored. Because the character isn't fleshed out, he could easily come across as a one-note baddie. However, the deranged trucker's anonymity makes him more intimidating. Lewis and his friends aren't being chased by some random nutjob, but a malevolent boogeyman. When his truck repeatedly smashes into Lewis's car, it's easy to perceive the vehicle's bonnet as Rusty's true face. One of the most iconic moments is when he's speaking to the drivers on the radio and tells them, you need to get your tail light fixed. In that moment, he doesn't sound like a man, but an ever-present force, capable of finding his prey no matter where they go. Number 7. Elmer, Brain Damage In Brain Damage, a young man called Brian wakes one morning to discover an alien worm called Elmer has burrowed into his neck. Terrible way to start any day, let's be honest. Needing brains to survive, the extraterrestrial urges Brian to kill people and wolf down their grey matter. Not being a big fan of cannibalism, Brian initially refuses, but when the parasite pumps Brian's mind with euphoric chemicals, he develops a crippling addiction to the sensation, urging him to do everything Elmer asks to re-experience it. Conceptually, having an alien bribe a human with drugs to kill on his behalf sounds dumb. However, Brain Damage deals with the idea perfectly, realistically exploring the effects of enabling, codependence, and withdrawal. Because Elmer relies on manipulating his host physically, emotionally, and chemically, it makes him a more interesting antagonist than your typical alien. 
Another aspect of Aelma worth mentioning is his unique voice. Rather than speaking in a beastly manner, the space creature talks in a posh and friendly dialect. Although this seems like an odd decision at first, it makes Aelma creepier since he sounds like he deeply cares for Brian, even though he's using him to satiate his own needs. Number 6. The Judas Breed, Mimic with his work on Hellboy, The Shape of Water, Crimson Peak, and Pan's Labyrinth, Guillermo del Toro has a gift for devising imaginative movie monsters. But before he was an Academy Award-winning filmmaker, del Toro showcased his creative talents in the underappreciated sci-fi flick, Mimic. The film opens with an entomologist creating a genetically enhanced cockroach called the Judas Breed for the betterment of mankind. Within three years, the mutant bug has evolved into gigantic monsters with a compulsion to kill anyone who crosses them. These pests are extra dangerous since they can take the form of a human being to lure their prey to their doom. Although Mimic has plenty of jump scares, the roaches are more unsettling when they rely on subtlety. When the carnivorous creepy crawlies use their shape-shifting skills to entice someone towards them, viewers are just waiting for heads to roll. And because this is del Toro we're talking about, the creature effects are out of this world. Even though Mimic isn't as renowned as most of the Mexican director's features, the roaches are among his scariest creations. Number 5. Horace Pinker, Shocker In Wes Craven's Shocker, Horace Pinker is sent to the electric chair after being convicted for murder. Thanks to a deal with the devil, getting fried by the chair gives Horace the power to summon electricity and possess others. Rather than just having Horace blasting everyone with thunderbolts, the gleeful serial killer is a bit more innovative with disposing his victims. At one point, Horace mind jumps into a cop so he can use his gun to shoot passers-by. Another time, he takes control of a driver, allowing him to ram into a truck and kill all the passengers. What's worse is that the authority figures have great difficulty tracking down Horace, since he can take any form. As a result, there are moments where the characters and viewers have no idea what Horace looks like, until it's too late. And since Shocker has the same writer as A Nightmare on Elm Street, it's no surprise Horace churns out one-liners and lightning-based puns at every given opportunity. Because Craven properties have a habit of spawning sequels, it's surprising that Shocker never had a follow-up. If it did, Horace could have become as iconic as some of Craven's other creations, such as Ghostface and Freddy Krueger. Number 4. Don Burnside, The Clove Hitch Killer The Clove Hitch Killer takes place in a small town that's still reeling from a murder spree that occurred a decade ago, which resulted in 10 women being bound, raped, and killed. After discovering BDSM photographs in his father's truck, Tyler Burnside is horrified to learn that his dad, Don, is the infamous Clove Hitch Killer. Because Don is perceived as an adoring husband, a devout Christian, and a beloved figure in the community, he's literally the last person anyone would suspect. Tyler is conflicted about stopping his father, knowing it'll destroy his town's reputation and his family if his abhorrent crimes become public. Although Don Burnside is a well-written villain, it's Dylan McDermott's career-best performance that makes the character so memorable. His voice, physical mannerisms, and demeanor as Clove Hitch are so different to his public persona, it feels like McDermott is playing two different people. As such, it's terrifying to see Don switch between the dual roles in a heartbeat. Because of this, Don is potentially scarier in his family man guise, since viewers are waiting for him to reveal the monster that he really is. Number 3. The Demon, The Wailing In The Wailing, the residents of an isolated Korean town are infected with a mysterious disease, compelling them to act violent, savage, and murderous. When police officer Jong Gu is tasked with investigating the infected, he discovers the disease may be tied to a demon. He initially looks for a more logical explanation, but a run-in with a red-eyed monster convinces him the virus is supernatural. While trying to make sense of the case, he encounters many strange figures, including vagrants, shamans, and spirits. Because of their cryptic demeanors, he cannot be certain if these characters are helping him with his mission or deliberately impairing it. Even though the demon rarely appears throughout the 156-minute runtime, and his identity isn't revealed until the closing moments, his presence can be felt in every frame. Since The Wailing relies on misdirection and offers conflicting interpretations of the unfolding story, viewers will be second-guessing who the demon is until the very end. Despite the fact next to nothing is revealed about our devilish antagonist, his origins or his true intentions, he still manages to get under your skin. Number 2. The Creep, Creep and Creep 2 
The creep duology centers around a self-admitted serial killer, Joseph, who lures videographers to his cabin with the promise of work. After toying with them physically and psychologically for a few days, he murders them and adds the video footage they recorded to his collection. Viewers don't know what his deal is when introduced to him, but they instantly get a bad vibe due to his compulsion to overshare and push personal boundaries. Although a rational person should be running for the hills five minutes after meeting the guy, there's something enigmatically charismatic about Joseph which makes people stick around. Every time his victims are ready to check out, he knows what to do and what to say to lure them in a little closer. The character has been explored in depth in two films, and yet nothing has been given away about him. Even though he gives detailed accounts about his background, family, desires and fears, it's impossible to take anything he says seriously since he's a textbook compulsive liar. But because the character is still shrouded in secrecy, let's hope he's explored further in another sequel. Number 1. Edward Carver, The Poughkeepsie Tapes Edward Carver from The Poughkeepsie Tapes is among the few horror villains who can be classified as too disturbing. Not only does this depraved lunatic kidnap, enslave, rape, mutilate and slaughter anyone who tickles his fancy, he records these encounters so he can watch the captives suffer again and again. When the FBI raid Carver's home, they are horrified to find 800 videotapes, each filled with him performing the most unspeakable acts to his victims. The first of these tapes displays Carver abducting and killing an 8-year-old girl. The most unnerving part is when the documentary shows how Carver utterly destroyed one of his prisoners, Cheryl Dempsey, physically and mentally. When she's rescued by the police, it's clear she's psychologically broken since she believes Carver is her lover. After seeing how irreversibly damaged she's become, it's not surprising when it's unveiled that Cheryl took her life two weeks after the interview. In the movie's final moments, we learn that Carver stole Cheryl's remains, just to remind us one last time that his evil knows no bounds. And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.